Hello everyone. So today we wanted to talk about uh, domains in ferromagnets. So uh, just like a bar magnet where you have south poles and now north poles, you can see these ray fields which are coming out from the magnet. And this can be clearly visualized if you have some iron particles, you can see these uh, stray field lines. And if you calculate the dipolar um, energy involved in this, it's literally the um, demagnetization fields or stray fields within a certain volume. Now, if we consider in the same analogy uh, ferromagnetic material, you can see that it's just like a bar magnet. You can um, think of some uh, stray fields in this coming out from one side and going into the other. And these stray fields, you can see they are drawn with a very big lines. So the uh, energy involved is also very high. So system will not prefer such a situation because energy is too large and uh, it wants to uh, minimize the stray, uh, stray fields. For this, the system goes into domains. Here is shown for bar magnets. So you have two magnets uh, next to each other in opposite direction. And you can see now these stray fields are denoted with very small lines, meaning that the stray uh, fields as well as the dipole energy involved here already become half of it uh, by uh, dividing it into two. Now, uh, in the same way, you can divide the magnet into two domains where magnetization pointing up and the other one pointing down. In this way, these ray fields are now drawn with the uh, smaller lines. Uh, and uh, in this way, the energy is also minimized, minimized. And if you split them in more and more domains, the energy will be more and more minimized. And then there is a, a Landau um, type of schematics in which and dipole energy is really minimized and stray fields are zero. This uh, situation is actually um, when system is uh, in low energy state. So ideally system want to uh, split into infinite domains, but um, this cannot happen because it can satisfy the stray fields and dipole energy, but as it uh, split into domain, it will cost near the domain wall. Um, exchange energy. So exchange energy will not be happy because it want to align spins parallel to each other. However, now uh, spin is going to change the orientation. So exchange energy will not be so happy about it. So if you want to split into infinite domains, exchange energy will be, will be very large. Um, and um, then uh, it's a compromise how much domains you will get. It's a compromise between exchange energy and the anisotropy energy. And the system will uh, prefer a situation where both energies will be minimized. So now we look at a real example of a material which is iron. And in this one, you can see it's a 100, a single crystal with cubic, uh, cubic crystalline anisotropy. And in this one, you can identify regions where the domains are um, 90 degrees. So here you can see magnetization pointing upward. And in this domain, it's pointing from left to right. So the angle between these two domains is 90 degrees. And, but if you look here, their domains are opposite to each other. So these are 180 degree domains. So these are simple examples, but they can be much more complicated uh, domain structures also with different angles. And um, if you look uh, the um, demagnetization field for this one, it's uh, the sum will be zero because uh, there is some certain combination of domain. Uh, structure present here. Now, if you look to the hysteresis loop, which is characteristic of ferromagnet, and you start uh, from zero field. In this situation, you will have um, a Landau type configuration where demagnetization field uh, sum is zero for all domains. And if you go up in field, the domains uh, which are uh, along the field direction and energetically more favorable will start to grow and others will start to decay. But uh, there are some uh, domains which uh, are very hard to remove in uh, certain fields. They will always get pinned unless you apply really, really large magnetic fields. And such a situation is described here. And now if uh, we uh, look to the um, to, uh, to this uh, hysteresis loop, there you can also see some remnant uh, field. So remnant field is simply now where uh, you will saturate a magnetized uh, magnet 
left and you will go back towards zero field the magnetization will not go back to zero and there will always be some remnant uh, magnetization and associated uh, will be um, here it's uh, B is induced field there will be associated induced field or magnetization which you can see uh, here so so far we discussed uh, that um, there are uh, 180 degree type domains and there are 90 degree uh, domains these are simple examples there can be much more complicated situations in the same way there are many types of domain walls uh, so domain wall is uh, the area between two domains which we are going to see in a while and so there uh, we will only discuss the example for the 180 degree domains uh, how the domain wall between these two region um, looks like there are uh, two simple examples of the uh, domain wall so first let's uh, understand what is domain wall so you can see here 180 degree domain so domains are um, two uh, big regions where magnetization are pointing in opposite direction so if you look uh, the area between this here it's shown very big but usually they are very small nanometer range so now we wanted to see how uh, the uh, domain wall energies are uh, going to play a role if uh, we write a simple expression so energy of a wall which can be block wall or nail wall can be written as a combination of exchange energy magnetic line energy and uh, electrostatic energy which is coming from demagnetization factors so now um, what exchange energy wants to do so exchange energy want to have uh, will be minimum if spins are parallel to each other so it does not want the spins to um, rotate from this direction to this direction with a large angle which means that it will it wants to have a small small um, angles between different spins giving rise to a very large domain wall uh, width so um, exchange energy will be minimum if the wall is um, bigger and the angle of rotation is small now if we look to the um, magnetocrystalline energy or uh, the demagnetization factor so for magnetocrystalline we can uh, consider it uh, here constant and for uh, demagnetization factors this energy actually wants to have um, uh, um, domain wall infinite a uh, very large number of domain walls so you can have very small stray fields so we have to look a bit more carefully how the uh, block wall or nail wall is going to put uh, stray fields uh, on different directions so now we are going to look how the demagnetization fields or stray fields are going to be created at the domain walls in this situation we will consider that all other energies are going to be same for block wall and the domain wall so in this expression only this ed the energy due to demagnetization fields will change so now to calculate this we just uh, see how the domain wall is created so now for block wall we can have a situation where magnetization is rotating rotating also out of plane direction so here spin is po uh, pointing out of plane and you can have uh, an ellipsoid like this with um, a dimension longer in the out of plane direction and in plane the width is smaller than the out of plane direction so now if you calculate the uh, demagnetization factors you can see that the demagnetization factors can be taken as the ratio of the width of this uh, ellipsoid divided by the width plus thickness which is written here in the nail wall situation you can just uh, uh, think of this ellipsoid to be within the plane because how the nail wall is created is uh, the magnetization rotate only within the plane so you can think that magnet think here as magnetization is in this direction and now you have to calculate the demagnetization factor and in this way the demagnetization charges are actually going to be within the film and if you calculate the demagnetization factor here and now in this situation it's going to be a ratio of the length in the vertical direction which is the thickness of the domain wall divided by 
um, width plus thickness so other two dimensions uh, are going to be added here so in this way you can calculate the demagnetization factors both for block wall and for the nail walls now a small comment on uh, the thickness of uh, the domain walls one important thing here is that as the block wall put the charges the demagnetization charges on the surface so uh, it is not preferred in thin films because then the surface will have a lot of demagnetization uh, fields uh, coming in the outward direction on the surface so it's only preferred in um, very thick um, films and single crystals however nail wall uh, puts charges within the um, plane of the film and uh, therefore it is more suitable for thin films which we are going to see also in detail so now let's uh, look to the energies of the domain walls as we already consider that exchange and magnetocrystalline energies are going to be the same for these two domain walls and only the one we are going to focus is uh, related to the demagnetization factor so i wrote the expression for block and nail wall separately and here you can see if we put the demagnetization factors here for these domain walls which are also written here um, you can see what is the most prominent dif most prominent difference between these energy expressions so if uh, we look to the equation the most important difference is that here you can you have the thickness only coming in the denominator and however here it's coming in the numerator also so meaning that the energy of the block wall is increasing with decrease of the thickness however in nail wall it's increasing with increasing the thickness of the nail wall so this is the most crucial point to be remember now you can see this also clearly in the graph shown here here you can see that wall energy uh, some of the wall energy is actually plotted here as function of film thickness so here uh, we con uh, consider all other contributions to be same for the block and nail wall so only uh, the thing which is influencing is the demagnetization factors and the energy associated with it so you can see that wall energy is increasing with film thickness for nail wall so it's lower for thinner films and uh, it increases for thicker films meaning that as you increase the thickness of the wall domain wall nail wall is not going to be very uh, favorable so however in the block wall if you see the wall energy is going down as you increase the thickness so for crystals for bulk um, materials for very thick films block walls are the ones which will be actually more favorable and there is some critical thickness where you can have both nail and block wall where both curves are actually going to cross each other now if we look to the uh, expression for the domain wall widths uh, for block wall as well as uh, nail wall you can see that the expression is very similar here you can see for the block wall and here you can see the nail wall so for both um, it is proportional to the exchange stiffness constant because exchange energy wants to have very wide domain walls it does not want to have the uh, spins to rotate very fastly within the domain wall uh, width so it prefers very small angles between different spins and which will give rise to a very large uh, domain walls however in the block wall um, you can uh, the think of the uniaxial anisotropy to be more uh, prominent in uh, block wall it will prefer to have um, a preferred uh, direction and which means that it want to have a small domain wall width in nail wall it becomes a slightly more complicated to define the width and uh, profile of the domain walls but um, one important thing here is that uh, for nail wall as it puts the stray fields within the film so the domain wall width will also depend on the demagnetization energy um, one important thing to understand here is that um, as you go thicker um, in film the block wall is preferred but as you go thinner the stray field in the block wall are created on the surface of the film so as you go thinner the stray field will become more and more prominent and then these films are not uh, pr uh, preferred for such situation now if we look wall width as a graphical representation we can see here that wall width for both block and nail wall 
uh, as function of film thickness you can see that block wall uh, width is increasing as you go uh, for very thick films and it will also become more and more energetically favorable however if you uh, look to the nail wall in thin films it will have very large wall width however as you go down the wall width will decrease as you increase the thickness and nail wall also become more and more uh, um, unfavorable so now before closing the discussion of the block and nail wall the two cases which we have seen for 180 degree domains uh, I would like to mention here that uh, apart from this, there are much more complicated situations for the domain walls and one situation is known as cross tie walls and in this situation you have an intermediate situation between block and nail walls and uh, you can have many more mixtures and combinations of the walls.